Hello everyone! Here's another Solve With Me video. This is a hard level puzzle that can be solved easily if you find the skyscraper, two string kites, and a unique rectangle. Just find those and this puzzle is a piece of cake. It so happens that there is an opportunity in this puzzle to use Fistimafil's ring. It's not necessary to solve the puzzle, but it lets us place at least a couple of numbers. So let's have a go at this puzzle together. Here's the puzzle and first let's have a look at this beautiful ring. Fistimafil's ring. I have a video on why that works, but in short, the 16 squares surrounding the center 3x3 three three square. Here, let me highlight that in yellow. Okay, that's the ring. That will always have the same digits as the four cells in the four corners. Let me highlight those in green. There. Now, let's see. One, two, three. I count three ones in the ring. That's in the yellow cells, and there can't be any more ones in the ring because of these ones already in the column. So that means the green cells, which already have two ones placed in them, need a third one. And where can it go? So it looks like it can only go here. It can't go in block 3 since there's already a 1 in the block, and it can't go in block 7, nor block 9 for the same reason, so it has to go in one of these two cells in block 1, and it can't go here, so it has to go here. Wow, that was a nice application of Fistimafel's ring, right at the beginning. Anything else we can do? 2. We already have the 2, 3, that's already there, 4. Okay, there's one 4 in the ring, and this cell can't be a 4, since there's already a 4 in column 2. So the 4 could either go in these two cells, or in these two cells. That could be helpful later, but right now there's no way to tell where the 4 would go. Okay, what about 5? Yes, there are no 5s in the ring, and there needs to be a 5, since there's a 5 here in the corner, so where could it go? Well, it can't go in these cells because there's already a 5 in the block, and it can't go here, so it has to go here. Great, we've already placed two numbers just using Fistimafel's ring. I'm not seeing anything. Let's see, there are three 7s in the ring, and there are... No, I don't see anything else, but maybe later that will help us again. Meanwhile, let's go back to solving this the traditional way, starting with the number one. Any low-hanging fruit? And I'm going to start off with Snyder notation. That is only marking candidates if they are restricted to two cells in the same block. So here I have a bunch of ones, one extra thanks to the ring. So I can pencil in two ones here in block two, here and here. And here I can place a 1, and here I can place a 1. So that takes care of the 1s. Now let's see, 2. Oh, this is interesting. Here we have a bunch of numbers in the third row. 1, 3, 9, 7, and 6. And in column 2 we have the 1, 4, 5, and 9. And I wonder, let's see what's missing. 1, 2, there's no 2, so this cell could be a 2. Let's see, it can't be a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this cell can only be a 2, yay! Let's see what else we can do with the number 3. Well, in block 3, I can pencil in 3s here and here. And in block 4 also, I can pencil in 3s here and here. And I can place a 3 here, and now I can pencil in 3s here and here. And 4, we can place a 4 here. And now there are just two cells left in the row, so we'll have a matching pair. So let's fill that in. What's missing? The 5 and the 8. And let's see, I can pencil in 4s here in block 4. Okay, moving on to 5, I can pencil in 5s in block 1, and down here in block 8. And now that I've penciled those in, they are locked into the same row, so in block 9, the 5s can only go here and here. 
Okay, moving on to the number six. Oh, wait. I see this one I placed here. That means this can't be a one. So this has to be the one. Somehow I missed that. Okay, where were we? Six. I can pencil in sixes here in block two and here in block six. What about seven? In block three, I can pencil in sevens. And in block five, I can pencil in sevens. And here in block nine, I can pencil in sevens. Okay, moving on to the number eight. I can pencil in eights here in block two. And hmm, there are just three cells left in this block. And I see I can pencil in twos here. Okay, let's move on to the number nine. And then I'll go back over the grid to see if I missed any easy cells, which is likely. Let's see, I can pencil in nines in block three. Oh, and look at that. Because of this nine, I can place a nine here in block five. And I think this cell, I don't think it could be any other number. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. So this cell has to be an eight, which resolves this matching pair here. This has to be a six, and then this is an eight. And since there are just two cells left in column six, let's fill those in. What's missing? The two and the six. And I see another opportunity here in block four. I can pencil in eights here and here, and in block five, there are just two cells left. So what's missing? The two and the seven. We already have the seven, so let's pencil in the twos. And now this can't be a two anymore, so this has to be the two. Now there are two cells left in block two, so we can fill them in. It's a four and a five. So we have a four, five pair in block two. Let's see if we can finish up this row. What's missing? The two, seven, and eight. Ah, so this cell can't be a two or a seven since we already have those in the block. So this cell has to be an eight. And that resolves this five, eight pair. This has to be the five. And then this is the eight. And now that resolves this pair of fives in block nine. This has to be the five. All right, at this point, I'm going to fill in all the remaining candidates and look around to see if there are any patterns that I might find. All right, I filled in all the cells, and that's really helpful because now I can see that I have a six, nine pair in column nine. They're locked candidates, so there can't be any other sixes or nines in the column. So I can eliminate this nine here and this six nine down here. And that means this cell has to be a nine since there are no other nines in the block. And let's clean up these nines. Oh, and this cell has to be a three. There's nowhere else in the block a three can go. Great. Let's just get rid of this three. And now we have a four seven pair in the block and a four seven pair in column nine. So, Okay, we have two fours here in column nine and two fours here in column five. So this looks like a skyscraper pattern. Let's highlight those cells. Okay, now you can see the skyscraper pattern better. And that means I can eliminate the fours in these cells. Let's make them pink. Okay, we can go ahead and eliminate the fours from these cells, which is going to let me place a nine here. Before I do that, let me explain why this works, the skyscraper pattern. We see that if we focus on the number four, there are just two possible fours in column five and just two possible fours in column nine. And the fours are in the same row, row two. Let's call that the base of the skyscraper. And then down here, we have two fours and that would be the roof, I suppose. Now, one of these two cells has to be a four, but we don't know which one. Why? In columns five and nine, one of these two have to be a four, but we don't know which one. See, if this is a four, then this can't be a four. 
and then this would have to be a four. On the other hand, if this is not a four, then this would have to be a four. So either way around, if this is the four, or if it's not the four, either way around, one of these two cells has to be a four. And that means that any cell that sees both of these cells cannot be a four. So these two cells are in the same row and block, so we can eliminate the fours from these cells. And this cell is in the same row and block, so we can eliminate the four from this cell. And that leaves us with a naked single, the nine. Great. Now let's see what we have here. In column nine, we have a four seven pair and a six nine. And in row one, there's only a four seven and a four five and a five seven. So, okay, I think we have a two string kite here. Let's see, if we focus on the seven, there are just two sevens in column nine. Let me highlight those in yellow. And there are just two sevens in this row. Let's highlight those in yellow. So now we have a row with just two possible sevens and a column with just two possible sevens. And they both intersect into the same block, block three. So that is a classic two string kite pattern. Now these two sevens are in the same block, block three. So they can't both be true, right? One is true and the other is not. So that means these two sevens, it's the same thing. One is true and the other is not. Since these are the only sevens in the row and the column, one of them has to be a seven. So any cell that sees both of these sevens, let me change those to green so you can see it more clearly. So any cell that sees both green cells can't be a seven. And this cell down here is in the same row as this seven and the same column as this seven. So we can eliminate the seven from this cell. And now we have a two, eight, nine. Oh, I forgot to get rid of the nines when I placed this nine. So let's do that now. Okay, that was nice. A two string kite is when you have only two candidates in a row and a column. And those two, the row and the column intersect into the same block. And let's see. Here, we have two nines in row seven and two nines in column eight, and they intersect into block nine. So we have another two string kite here, and they are actually pretty common, but in order to spot them, you really need to fill in all the candidates, and sometimes you find them and they really don't help much. Let's see what we have here. Let me go ahead and highlight those cells in yellow again. And now you can see more clearly a row with two nines and a column with two nines, and they both intersect into the same block. So we have the classic two string kite pattern. Now any cell that sees both ends of the strings, those are these cells. So let me change them to green like I did before. There. Now one more time for the logic, these two cells can't both be nines because they're in the same block. So one of them is a nine. And if one of them is not the nine, then in the same row, this green cell has to be a nine. And if this cell is not the nine, then this cell in the same column has to be the nine. So there are only two nines in the row and column. And that means one of these green cells has to be a nine. So any cell that sees both green cells can't be a nine. And this cell sees both green cells. It's in the same row as this one and the same column as this one. So we can eliminate the nine from this cell. And now something is pretty obvious here. We have a unique rectangle pattern here. These two cells are two seven. And these two cells also have a two seven, although there's also a six with it. So this cell has to be a six, or we would have what is known as the deadly pattern, a puzzle with more than one solution. So this cell has to be a six. I just did a couple of videos on unique rectangles, so you might want to check those out. But here, let me highlight those cells that form the deadly pattern. 
And you can see that these four cells can't be just twos and sevens. That would break the rule that every Sudoku puzzle must have one and only one solution. In other words, a unique solution. So that's why it's called the uniqueness rule. Now, if this cell is not a six, let's take that six away for the moment. Now we have just two seven in these four cells. And there is one more rule. The four cells have to follow the two by two by two rule. That is, they have to be in two rows, two columns, and two blocks, and they are. They are in these two columns, these two rows, and these two blocks. So this is a unique rectangle pattern. Now, if this were the case, the puzzle would have more than one solution. You see, these two cells could be twos, and these two cells could be sevens, or these two could be the sevens, and these two could be the twos without affecting the rest of the puzzle, and that can't be. So let's put back that six, and now, in order to prevent the puzzle from having more than one solution, this cell has to be a six. And I shouldn't forget to clean up the grid. So now that I place the six, I can get rid of all of these sixes. And that leaves us with a naked single, the four, which makes this a nine, and this a six, and this a nine. Nice. And then this is a three, which makes this a six. And I think the whole puzzle is going to unravel at this point. Let's see, this is a nine, and this is a three. And now that I've placed all those numbers, let me go ahead and clean up the grid and get rid of some of the extra candidates. And now you can see a naked single, the seven here. So this is a seven, and then this is a four, and this is a seven, four, five, seven, five, four, three. Let's see down here, this is now a four, and this is a five, and this can't be a seven anymore, so it's a two, which makes this a six, and this is a two, and this is an eight, six, eight, seven, nine. Then we have here a two, seven, two, seven, and eight, and the puzzle is done. That was a really nice puzzle to demonstrate Fistimafel's ring, and also the skyscraper, and two two-string kite patterns, as well as the unique rectangle. I hope you enjoyed this Solve With Me video, and you know it, I hope you learned something.